we're going to start off by just warming up, going review with uh, pH. So hopefully you guys could look back into your old notes and you should have seen the pH formula, which is negative log of the concentration. These brackets always mean concentration or molarity of H+. Now, if you guys take a look at the concentration of H+, we have the scientific notation number again. So we need to change that um, into a regular number so you can plug into your calculator. If you guys remember from last time, this exponent, if it's negative, you move the decimal to the left. And so since you have 2.5 and it's negative three, you move it three times to the left. So the decimal point is here now. So you get 0 0.0025, okay? So hopefully last time you got some good practice with that. So you're comfortable uh, moving the decimal around, but this is gonna equal 0 0.0025. All right, now we got to use our calculator and you got to use one that has the log function on it. So we're going to plug in 0 0.0025 and then we're going to click log and then you want to make it negative because it's negative log right here. And so you'll get a pH of 2.6. Okay, so just again, what you plug into the calculator is negative log of 0 and that's gonna give you a pH of 2.6, okay? All right, that's pretty much it. That's going to be how you calculate pH. Um, hopefully not too bad. You just need to use that one equation. And you will need to use this pH equation again today. So just make sure you have it either in your previous notes or if you wanna jot it down for this warm up, you're good as well. Okay, but any questions? Easy peasy? Okay. Yes. Okay, now titration is a method that we use to figure out the concentration of whether or not um, a solution is acidic or basic. So there's a lot of real world applications for this. Um, and so you guys don't need to write this down. This is just kind of information for you guys, um, but it's a good way to measure the pH of uh, bodies of water and things like that. We can find the pH of different cosmetics. We can find the pH of food. Um, and so basically it's a way for us to figure out if something is acidic or basic. So one of the parts of the lab, I think the last part of the lab, um, I'm gonna be going to the Colorado Lagoon and stealing some water, and you're gonna have to find the pH of the water in there. So um, people use methods like titration that we'll be using for the lab in order to figure out the pH, whether or not um, the water concentration for acids and bases is suitable for life and things like that. So just a quick review um, or information on world, real life applications, but Let's talk about how to actually do titration. So I need you guys to write this part right here, the part that's highlighted. Um, so titration is a way to test and determine the pH of a solution. Okay, so if you got a container of water, like for example, when I steal the water from the lagoon, um, we can test and figure out what the pH of that water is. Okay, so again, titration is a way to test and determine the pH of a solution. Just the part that's highlighted right now. Okay, and you guys don't need to write this other stuff down here, but it's very simple uh, for our titrations. We're gonna be slowly adding base to a solution and we'll figure out how acidic it is, okay? That's pretty much how you do it. You just slowly add either an acid or base, and then you can figure out, you can do some math and calculate uh, the pH of that solution, okay? All right, so you guys do not need to write this question down. You'll have to do it later. But what we're gonna be doing, I'm gonna zoom out a little bit. And what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be labeling um, the set titration setup. So um, you guys see the real life one right here, and then you guys see the picture right here. And I need you to copy this down, but don't make it super detailed like this, okay? As long as you have this tube right here somewhere on your paper, so you can just do it like this. It doesn't need to be detailed. And then just a flask on the bottom, that's totally fine. So I'm going to give you guys about a minute to draw this setup. Again, it does not need to be super fancy. Um, We will be labeling stuff on it, so make it a good size, Um, not like half a page or anything like that, but at least uh, big enough for you guys to draw some arrows and label it. So I'll give you guys about a minute to draw something like this, and then we'll start labeling it. And I'll teach you guys what the different parts of this titration setup is, okay? 
Okay, so um, in a titration setup, uh, what we're going to be doing is first, we're, let's talk about what the equipment is. So for the equipment, this long, tall tube, the one that you guys see up here, um, this is called a burette. So B-U-R-E-T, burette. Okay. So this long tube is called a burette. And what you're going to be doing for your lab is um, we're going to be adding our base into the burette. Okay, so let's write that the burette is going to have, it has the base. Okay, so your base, you're going to be making a base uh, separately on the side for your lab. Okay, and then what you're going to be doing is you're going to be pouring your base into the burette. That's basically what the burette does. The burette contains the base. And then um, I don't know if you guys can see it up here, but if you turn it on, the, it's going to be able to drop the base into the container on the bottom. Okay, but that's what it does. The burette drops the base into the uh the container underneath it. Okay. All right. Um, underneath the burette, we have our flask, and you guys have already seen this flask. This is called an Erlenmeyer flask, but I'm just going to call it an E flask. Because uh, Erlenmeyer is a big word, and I don't want to write that. Okay, so we got our E flask. Okay. And for our Erlenmeyer flask, this is going to be where you have the acid. Okay, your acid is going to be in the Erlenmeyer flask, and then you're going to be adding base from the burette into the Erlenmeyer flask. Okay, so it's a pretty simple setup. I know it can look very complicated looking. But it's very simple. All you do is you add base into acid. Okay, it's only like two parts. <clears throat> All right. Now, one other thing that the Erlenmeyer flask contains is it contains something called an indicator. Okay. Okay. And basically, what an indicator is is it's a chemical that changes color when your solution is neutralized. So here we have acid, and then when we add base, you guys remember how acid and base, base make water, right? Once everything in here turns into water, the indicator changes color to let you know that everything in here is now water, okay? So it's kind of a neat little chemical. Um, it changes color when it's in water, when it goes from acid to base, and so um, that's what's going to be in here. That's what allows us to visually tell if you're done titrating. All right, now two very important things um, about the acid and base. So the base that you make, the concentration of that base is gonna be known. Okay, so make sure you guys write that somewhere. So the concentration or the molarity is gonna be known. So you're gonna know how strong the base is, which makes sense because you're gonna be making it. So um, if you guys remember the making solutions lecture, the part that you guys really didn't like in the previous lab, um, you're going to be doing that a bunch for this lab because I'm not going to be making any of your base for you. You're going to have to make it on your own and you're going to have to calculate what the con concentration is. Okay. All right. And then lastly, the thing about the acid that's important. So I'll write it right here. Okay. The acid's concentration is unknown. Okay. So you're not going to know what the concentration of the acid is. You're not, you don't know what the molarity is. And so by titrating, you can calculate what this is. The point of titration is to figure this out. Okay, you want to figure out the molarity of acid. Okay, that is the point of titration. Okay. So I'll give you guys about a minute or so to finish copying everything down. But you guys have any questions on what the purpose of titration is, where everything goes? Okay, next time we meet, we're going to actually start working with the titration setup. Um, so just be comfortable um, knowing what a pure red is, where what goes. Okay. All righty, let's move on. So what I want you guys to do first, and this is the first time I'll ever, or probably the only time I'll ask you this, but please copy this question down. Yeah, I know I never ask you to copy the question down, but please copy the question down um, because uh, we're going to be referring back to it. So take about a minute to copy the question down. If you want to start copying down the steps, you can do that too. 
Um, but at least copy the question down and I'll give you guys some time to copy down the steps as well, but mm -hmm. copy down the question. And if you can get to like step one, step two, whatever you can, I'll give you guys about two minutes. All right, guys. So, um, in this problem, you kind of see what we're going to be, uh, thinking about as we do uh titration, we want to find the pH of an acid sample. And then the titration is going to allow us how much base we need to neutralize it. Okay. So. Step one of titration is pretty much the step one of all the stuff we've been doing. We want to write and balance the chemical equation, okay? Now, the chemical equation for titration is super simple. It's basically what we've been doing. Um, it's always going to be an acid plus a base, okay? And it's going to make water, and then you're going to have a salt, okay? This should look pretty familiar, right? Same thing we've been doing. All right, so let's start off by taking a look at the question. And let's take a look at the chemical formula that we see, NaOH. Okay, is NaOH an acid or is it a base? Yeah, this is going to be our base. So we can already plug that in right here. So we got our base, NaOH. Okay, now we don't know what our acid is. It could be any type of acid. But we learned before that acids have H+. plus inside of, it creates h plus in a solution right okay so that's what we're going to write for our acid okay so since we don't know what the acid is we're just going to write h plus okay and so we're going to be combining h plus and naoh okay now we're going to make water which is hoh and the only chemical we have left over that we didn't use from this side is na Okay, so we're just going to have Na plus. And that's it. That's your balance equation. Okay. So if you've been following along and keeping up with the work from this past semester, this shouldn't be too bad. It's just take H, OH, you make water. This thing is left over, so you got Na plus. Okay? All righty. Any questions about step one? All right, let's go to step two. Um, step two is a little bit, this is probably the annoying one. This is one the one you're going to have to do the most math on. So uh, let's take a look at it. So it says to use the molarity and milliliters of base used to find moles. Okay, so if you guys take a look at the question, let's just go through the different parts, okay? We first want to use the molarity of the base. So what is the molarity of the base according to the question? What's the only number we have for molarity in the problem? Yeah, 0 0.4. So it's going to be 0 0.4 molarity. All right, now we're going to be looking for milliliters next. Um, but if you take a look at the problem, you have two different numbers for milliliters, right? And so this is where you kind of have to pay attention and figure out which chemical the this milliliter and this milliliter is referring to. Okay, so if you guys just take a look at the question, 100 milliliters, is it talking about our acid or our base? Yeah, it's talking about our acid, right? Because 100 milliliter sample of acid and then 38 milliliters of base. So that means that the number we want to use here is 38 milliliters. We can just change it to liters right away, 0 0.038 liters. Okay. So again, we have two different numbers for milliliters, but this one is talking about our acid. And this one is talking about our base. Okay. Now, before we move on, I do want to give you guys a quick visual on what's happening in this problem. Basically, what this problem is telling us is that, hey, inside the container on the bottom, okay, so our flask, we have 100 milliliters of acid. Okay, does that make sense? 100 milliliter sample of acid. And then in our burette, Okay, what we had to do was we had to drain 38 milliliters. So if the, re like, let's say, for example, in the burette, you guys can't see the numbers from here, but it starts with zero. And then you added until you had 38 milliliters. And then the color changed at 38 milliliters. Okay, that'll tell you that you needed to add 38 milliliters. So that's where this 38 comes from. Okay, it's how much base you had it to had to add in order to neutralize the acid. Does that make sense? Okay, 
So what we're going to be doing is we're just going to be using the molarity formula. So capital M is equal to moles divided by liters. Okay, and based on that information, guys, all the stuff that we've done so far with these numbers, I want you guys to take a second, work with the person next to you, and I want you guys to calculate moles, okay? I want you guys to calculate moles using these numbers and this formula, okay? It's the same thing that we've been doing in our problems. So take about a minute, uh, punch that into your calculator, see if you can figure out the moles of base that we needed to add, okay? All right, so what we're going to be doing is we're going to be taking the 0.4 and plugging it in for capital M right here. So 0 0.4. Okay, for the liters, we're going to be plugging in 0 0.038. Okay, so what we want to do is we just want to multiply these two numbers, and that's how we're going to get moles. So you're going to pull out your calculator, and you're just going to multiply the two. So if we do that... We'll do 0 0.4 times 0 0.038, and we'll get an answer of 0 0.0152. So your answer for moles is going to be 0 0.0152 moles. And since we're talking about our base, it's going to be moles of NaOH. Okay, so that's going to be the answer for step two. Okay. All right. So far, so good, guys. Calculation's not too bad, right? It's a lot better than molarity stoic. <clears throat> All right, guys. So let's take a look at step three now. Um, step three is super duper easy. Um, the first thing that you want to do is you want to take a look at your equation right here. Okay. And for step three, um, let me just ask you guys a couple questions. What's the number in front of H plus right now in your equation? One. Okay, what's the number in front of NaOH? One. Okay, and then same thing for everybody else, right? So if everything is one in front of the chemicals in the balanced equation, the number or the moles of acid that you neutralize is going to be the same as your base. So it's going to be 0 0.0152 moles of acid okay and just a quick hint for this class at least it's always going to be ones in the front okay i'm not going to put anything else so step three is very easy you just take the same moles of base and that's going to be your moles of acid okay All righty, and now we're uh, very close to finishing. All right, you guys ready to move on? Okay, let's go to step four. Okay, so I'm gonna give you guys about a minute or so to copy down step four and step five. Um, Pretty short, you don't need to write this word for word. You can just write molarity of acid for step four and then step five, you can write pH if you'd like. But I'll give you a minute to copy down step four and step five. I'll show you guys how to solve for them, and then we'll be all done. So for step four, we're going to be finding the molarity of the acid, and you guys are probably sick of this formula, but it's going to be molarity is moles divided by liters. And so all we have to do is plug in these numbers. Now, we just found the molarity of acid in step three, right? So the molarity of acid comes from step three at 0 0.0152 moles, okay, and that's going to be of your acid. And then what we're going to do is we're going to divide by the volume of the acid. Now, earlier in the problem, if you guys remember up here, we saw the, mo the volume of the acid, right? We said that it's 100 milliliters. So we just need to turn that into liters. And that's what we can plug into this bot, the bottom of this fraction right here. So 100 milliliters is equal to 0 0.1 liters. So it's going to be the 100 milliliters number from the problem. It's going to be 0 0.1 liters. And if you guys plug that into your calculator, it'll be 0 0.00, oh, sorry, sorry, 0 0.152 molarity acid. Okay, so your acid is going to be this concentration right here. Okay. 
All right, and then last step, this one, I'll have you guys try on your own and let's see if you guys get the correct answer. It's the same thing that we did for the warm up, negative log of your H plus concentration, and that is gonna give you your pH. So I'll give you guys a minute, plug punch that into your calculator. Let's see if you guys can get the correct final answer for this problem. So for step five, super easy. Um, all we're gonna do is take the 0.152, we're gonna do log, and then we're gonna make it negative. And so for your final answer, you should get a pH of 0 0.82. If you didn't round up, that's fine. If you did 0 0.81, you're good. But as long as you got 0 0.8 something, you should be fine, okay? All right, guys, and that's titration. So that's gonna be our calculation part. So I'll give you guys some time today to work on your assignment where you've basically practiced calculations. Next time I see you guys, uh, I'll have you guys practice using the titration setup. And then after that, when I see you guys, I believe on Friday, that's when we'll start actually working with chemicals and things like that, okay? And then we'll do this all next week and then probably two weeks or so after spring break, and that'll be the entire unit, okay? So I'll give you the rest of the class period to work on the assignment.